within a cult, there's so many secrets. And part of what it can be so destructive, to go back to another example of why I consider these groups to be destructive, is that there's this code of secrecy that you're not supposed to share um, the you know, secret beliefs and teachings. You're not supposed to disclose what happens in the group. And the only way, really, they get you to follow that is by instilling some fear in you that something bad will happen to you if you disclose it. Or something bad, uh, this happened to actually once or twice with new clients, that they were told that not only would something bad happen to them if they told this sort of sharing the secrets and they told the stories, but something bad would happen to the person they told it to. And they actually at times needed for me to call them after I got home after the session or after I got home uh, after a long day of work to let them know that I was not hit by a bus and I wasn't abducted and whatever else they were told was going to happen to the person they told it to. Um, and now and I have to ask about that is fascinating. And that happens with other destructive cults than just Scientology? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because uh, <laughs> it's because it's rather infamous, you know, with Scientology, the OT3 Xenu story and how that's supposed to literally kill you. Yeah. To find out that information. Right. Yeah. And of course, you know, by record uh, and statistics, we have a, you know, zero percent people dying find it out about Xenu, right? right? Like so far, nobody, no deaths reported yet from Xenu. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the mystique in Scientology, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I was, but it's fascinating because that's the only place I've, you know, personally been familiar with that kind of a consequence of, of sharing the secrets is, you know, that that's in Scientology, I'm, that's, they say that or they threaten that. But there are other destructive cults that do that too. Yeah. Well, abusers and controllers survive uh, by keeping people quiet. Think about how many uh, children who tell that, you know, when they've been molested, they talk about being told, this is just going to be our secret. Um, and it's something that also people, I mean, cult leaders of all kinds, are going to be able to utilize to keep the secret um, especially if they introduce that notion of secrecy laced with fear. A fear-based teaching um, is something that gets under your skin, especially if it's invisible. Like this might happen or this could happen or um, the devil could be there or you might have this bad thing happen to you. You can't prove it or disprove it, but it still gets under your skin. It's like um, superstition. I am not a superstitious person. But I do think twice before I walk under a ladder. I have right. to admit. Right. Exactly. Because right? exactly. you say, hmm, I don't know. Let me just not take this risk, even though I think superstitions are ridiculous. Right. Okay. Right. But it could, it could happen. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And you just feel kind of uncomfortable and why risk it. And, and so, so that is part of human nature that we are usually controlled much more so by the kind of teachings that come along with fear-based kind of, um, I guess, warnings and predictions. Um, and so people don't want to take a risk. And then cult leaders keep getting away with it to a great degree. For sure. I think that's, um, I think breaking free of that, those mental, those psychological traps that get laid i thought you know they're kind of like little landmines that get laid in your head when you get involved in these groups and i think for me and probably for other people that um the one reason why it's so cathartic to speak out is because you're kind of blowing up those minds when you're doing that you know you exactly. kind of let them let them go and then exactly. you know and then and you're like finding out that oh i'm not dead nobody else is dead I'm still going, and in fact, my life is even better now as a result of having let go of and spoken out about 
those fears and those doubts and those worries and, and, and threats and various things. Because I, I think you're absolutely right. I, I think there's more to that fear-based control than maybe a lot of people might realize uh, when they're in those situations. 